In Mali, tensions continue following yesterday's military coup that deposed President Amadou Toumani Touré. FSRN's Amadou Timbeni is in Mali's capital, Bamako. Amadou, thanks for joining us. Bamako's airport is closed and people have been told by the coup leaders not to go to work. What's the situation like on the streets? As I'm speaking to you uh, right now, the city of Bamako is uh, calm after reports of vandalization and looting of shops last night by gunmen. Government departments remain closed, but banks and shops are reopened today. But some people told me that they are afraid of traveling to downtown Bamako because of the presence of heavily armed soldiers and they are surrounding the former president's office and the state television. We're also getting reports that there are shortages of bread and petrol. Can you give us any more information on that? I saw many people lining up at gas station, fearing that there will be shortage of fuel in the coming days because uh, all land borders are closed, and, uh, including airports. And what is the view of people on the ground towards this coup and how much support is there for it? Many people are uh, said that uh, they are supportive of uh, coup makers because they accuse the government of mismanagement. And the president, they said that the president uh, was not doing enough to contain the Tuareg rebellion in the north of the country. FSRN's Amadou Timbani in Mali's capital, Bamako. The UN Security Council, the United States, and the West African regional body, ECOWAS, condemned the coup. France, the former colonial power, and the EU have cut off aid. Meanwhile, Tuareg rebels continue to advance in the north of Mali. For more, we go to Robin Edward Poulton, Mali expert at Virginia Commonwealth University's School of World Studies. Welcome to Free Speech Radio News. Thank you for inviting me. Can you just give us a sense of the political context for this coup? Well, there are two contexts, really, and one is the north of Mali. In the north, there's uh, two completely new influences. And the first is the availability of big money through the cocaine trade. The cocaine trade has been moving through West Africa and the Sahel, and the Sahara Desert, and through Algeria and Libya into Europe. And the smugglers are very much connected to Al-Qaeda and what is known as Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb. And these are really Algerian fundamentalist Islamic former Afghan fighters who are running the drugs trade. And there are other people involved, of course, including Tuaregs and Moors and other people. But uh, that's a lot of big money in the north of Mali. And then there is the destruction of Libya and the southern brigade of the Libyan army, which was largely composed of of Mali and Tuaregs. Some of them were born in Libya. Many of them were just uh, mercenaries. And they've come home with huge amounts of weaponry. So we have in the north of Mali, in the Sahara, we have now a Libyan army with massive weapons. And we have um, large amounts of drug money. And this then brings us to Bamako, where the Malian army is now in a very bad morale. There was a massacre in a village called Agal Hok, a really brutal massacre of uh, Malian army prisoners of all colors, Arabs and Tuaregs and Bambaras and Soninkes and Sonrais and all the people who were in the army. But the pictures went around uh, around Bamako of these guys with bullets in their heads and their hands tied behind their back. And that made the army very, very angry. And what you have now is not really a coup d'etat. It's really a mutiny against the uh, higher command by the soldiers, the sergeants, the corporals, and then a couple of lieutenants and one a captain called uh, Samago, who has apparently taken the title of head of the junta. But I don't really think it's a political movement. I think it was a mutiny. Now, you're involved in peacekeeping and development work in Mali, and you have a property in Mali that was ransacked last night, but you were also there last month as part of a United Nations peacekeeping mission. What was the government telling you then about how likely it was that this coup, or mutiny as you call it, was on the way? Well, nobody was talking about coups, but coups were very evidently in the, in the offing or the risk of that, because the uh, morale of the army was so so bad. We met with various ambassadors, we met all the ministers involved, and we met, of course, the president and lots of councillors in the presidency. While while we were there, the women in the Kati barracks 
uh, revolted because their brothers and husbands and sons had just been victims of this defeat in Agal Hoc. And the government has been extremely weak in communications. And we've discussed that with many people. Uh, the problem is that if you have a president who's a general, a former general, and if you have several of his key ministers who are generals, then they are not politically uh, skilled communicators. They are uh, militarily skilled uh, organizers, and the, this is a communications failure. They didn't give out the information about the uh, massacre in Agal Hoc. The women marched on the palace. They got to the palace gates, they were rattling the gates. And so the president spent two hours with the women explaining himself and explaining the situation. And he, I must say, he, he explained it all very well, but it shouldn't have to be the president who explains these things. We weren't quite at the area of the mutiny, but we were not far away from it. And as we see now, the mutiny has just taken place. And yet elections were scheduled to take place at the end of April. Why did these members of the military carry out this coup now and, and not just wait a few weeks and perhaps change the government democratically? Uh, I don't think that the junta has any plans. I don't think they planned this, really. I think it's just complete uh, chaos. Uh, they're going around looting bars and um, shooting in the air. There's no discipline. It's not impossible the elections on the 29th of April uh, could still take place. It's not probable, but it is still possible. Robin Edward Poulton, Mali expert at Virginia Commonwealth University, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me.